we have 2 to the power of x minus 1 and 8 to the what? To the 1. Okay? 2 to the power of x minus 1 and 8 to the 1. And we're going to try and make common base, which means we're going to try and make their bases be the same. We never make them be the same larger. We always make them be the same smaller. So we can't make 2 be an 8 by going 2 to the 3. We are also doing exponential, so you can't go like 2 times 4 is 8. No. We're trying to figure out a base that you can raise to an exponent that will get you 8, and we're trying to make them common bases. So on both sides, the equal sign have the same base. What's the base? The base is the number that is below the exponent. Exponent is up top. Base is the number below it. Okay? So right now, I have a 2 as a base and an 8 as a base. I can't make them both be 8, but I can try and make them both be 2. 8 is 2 to the power of what? 3. So I have 2x minus 1 stays the same. And 8 is 2 to the 3. We agree? If I said this to you, if I gave you this, you would think I was crazy, but you'd still answer it because you'd be happy because it's easy. Um, if I give you 2 to the 3 equals 2 to the smiley face, and I said smiley face equals what? What would you tell me it equals? 3. Why? Equals is like, hey, you got to be the same. Yeah, exactly. So we have an equal sign here. So if this base is a 2 and this base is a 3, I have to say that this exponent equals this one, correct? But if I had 2 to the 3 equals 8 to the smiley face, would it be as easy as a question? Would it be as easy as a question? No, so that's why we're making common base. Once we get common base, we can, which we have already, we can just say that our exponents must equal, correct? Yeah. Just like here, we said 3 must equal smiley face. Well, here we can say x plus 1 must equal 3, and then we solve for it. So x would have to equal 4. Now, these ones are easy. So, mean, I know. Okay, so we're checking this. We're going to check this. The great thing about these is we can check them two ways. So we can walk away from this question knowing we're right and be happy or knowing we're wrong and try again. Rather than just cry, we try again, right? All good. So how do we check? We put what our answer is back into the x's in both sides of the equation. Don't move anything and just see if left side equals right side. If it does, you're right. If it doesn't, you made a mistake. So let's try it out. So we're going to get 2 to the 4 minus 1 equals 8 which is 2 to the 3 equals 8. And so we get 8 equals 8. We're good. Now, we can check it with our calculator. Why can we check with our calculator? Just like we could have done trig on the test with our calculator. Whenever you have an, ex an equation, so something with an equal sign, like sine x equals a half, so when you have something with an equal sign and you only are missing a variable, one variable, if you're missing two, you can't do it. If you're missing one thing like an x or a theta or in this case just an x, we can y1, y2 and find out where they intersect. So if it was a trig equation, per se, like yesterday, in a multiple choice, could you not y1, y2 and change your window to the restricted domain and just find out where they intersect with your calculator? Absolutely, you could. You could, 100%. We need to remember that. So if ever we have equal signs in our question, it means we have an equation. It means that left side equals right side. We agree? And there's only missing one variable. So if they're missing more than one variable, you can't plug it in, right? But if they're missing one variable, you put an x in for it. You'd y1, y2, find out, second trace 5, enter, 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 find the x value, done. OK? So we're going to try this here. So you're going to type it in y1, y2. You have to type it in because your calculator may do it differently. So we have to go y1 equals 2 to the power of x minus 1. Do you see how I'm writing this one out? If you have a calculator, and most of you have the other ones, but if you do have a calculator where the exponent does not pop up, okay, if the exponent doesn't pop up and you still have the little hat symbol like this, absolutely fine. You have to put your exponent in brackets. 
because that's the only way your calculator knows that it's 2 to the power of x minus 1. If you don't put it in brackets with the calculators that it doesn't pop up, if you don't put it in, in brackets, your calculator believes you're doing 2 to the power of x subtracting 1, which is not what we want at all, right? So if your calculator's exponent does not pop up, you have to put it in brackets. Everyone understand? Agree? If it does pop up, you're golden, okay? And then your y2 is 8. And then you're going to go second trace 5, enter, 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 and take the x value. Hmm, what is it? We're really hoping it's 4, four. because the answer is 4. <laughs> yeah? Yay! Okay. So as our examples go along, it gets a little harder because obviously that is how it works, okay? So we're going to look at B. We're doing one of each different type of example so that you can do them too. So when we look at B, when we look at A, we have 2 and 8, and we can make them be base 2, correct? When we look at B, we have 9 and 27, and a whole bunch of people tell me that 27 turns to 9 times 3. Lovely. I'm happy it turns to 9 times 3. However, that is not helpful. You need to get a base. You don't need to get two numbers multiplied together. You need a base to an exponent. So I actually can't make 9 be 27, and I can't make 27 be 9 at all. But I can make them both be base what? 3. 9 is 3 what? 3 to the 2, x minus 1, and 27 is 3 cubed, x. Now, the way I just wrote this lends a whole bunch of people to making a mistake, and that answer will be there. So the way I wrote this lends people to mistakes. They usually write then 3 to the 2x minus 1. Is that true? No. That 2 applies to the whole thing. So I always put my exponent in brackets so that I remember to distribute it. So if you're like, hey, that would totally be me. I would have wrote 2x minus 1. Or hey, that would be totally me because I have no idea why it's not 2x minus 1. Okay? you are going to put a little star on your notes and you're going to say remember to distribute your exponent into the other one, okay? Or arrow in. So this 2 applies to the whole exponent. And because there's only one base, we multiply exponents, correct? Just like we did over here. We multiply exponents. So we're going to get 2 to the x minus 2. Not 2 to the x, or not 2x minus 1, it's 2x minus 2. And then we get 3 to the 3x. No, because we're doing it algebraically. You could have just thrown the original into the calculator. I don't know why you would get to this step and put it in your calculator. I'm very confused. Okay, so, because we're doing this algebraically, not with our calculator. All right. So we have to be able to do these algebraically because often the question like this would be where did they make an error and your answer would be they didn't use their calculator. However, that answer is not an option on A, B, C, or D and so you are hooped. So we're going to learn how to do this algebraically. So we have 3 to the 2x minus 2 equals 3 to the 3x. So what are we going to do? Now because we have the same base, we can set those exponents equal because they must be. So 2x minus 2 equals 3x. I'm going to subtract my 2x. Now we're back to grade 9 math. Just solving. Okay. So we're going to plug y1 into our calculator as 9 to the power of x minus 1. And our y2 is 27 to the x. Try it out. And you're hoping to get what? Negative 2. And let's go. Everyone's plugging it into their calculators.
The next question, we trump it up a little bit more. We have 16 equals a half x plus 4. What makes people live better is if they can often turn a fraction into not a fraction because fractions scare people. They shouldn't. I really like fractions, but a lot of people does not. Okay. So we said before that if we had 1 over a, we could write that as a to the negative 1, correct? So if we have 1 over 2, yeah? It's a plus. So it's true. It's really shady looking, but it's a plus. Okay, so we're going to write the half. Remember, if we raise something to a negative sign, if we raise something to a negative sign, the fraction does what? It flips. Everything from the bottom goes to the top. Everything from the top goes to the bottom. Does any of the signs change on that fraction or anything? No, just what's in the denominator goes to the numerator. What's in the numerator goes to the denominator. So I'm going to write it as 2 over 1 to the negative 1, x plus 4. But what do I have to remember to do? Apply the negative 1 to the entire exponent. So I'm going to get 16 equals 2 to the negative x minus 4. And now I'm sitting at a question like the very first one we had. So the issue was the fraction, but once I got rid of the fraction, I'm now back to like the very first question we had, which was like a base of 2 and a base of 8. Remember, we always make them be smaller bases. We never make them be larger bases. So we can't make them both be 16 for those of you who are trying to do that. We can, however, make them both be what? 2. 16 is 2 to the what? 2 to the 4. So now, 2 to the 4. No. So we're going to write our exponents equal now. So we have 4 equals negative x, please be quiet, minus 4. Then what are we going to do? Add that 4. So we're going to get 8 equals negative x divided by negative 1, and x equals 8. And I could check this with y1, y2. Now I want you to check this one because you are going to be putting a fraction into your calculator. The moment any of you, it doesn't matter what calculator you have, the moment any of you type your calculator as a fraction, well, most of you, uh, when you type your fraction into your calculator, what does it have to be in? Brackets, or your calculator doesn't know it's a fraction. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're looking at D. D is 5 times 2 to the x equals 40. So some people freak out because you can't make 5 or 2 be base anything that's the same, right? But the step I'm going to go over with you, bless you, you can only do if two numbers both don't have exponents. So if you look at this one here, it's 5 to no exponent, right, times 2 to the x equals 40 to no exponent. So if there's more than one term that doesn't have an exponent, you can put them together. So how could we put them together? Divide 40 by 5. So we're <laughs> dividing them by 5. Now, if the 40 or the 5 had an exponent on it, like an x of some sort, you cannot put them together. I repeat. If the 40 or the 5 have an exponent on it, you cannot put them together. And now you're like, of course you can't. And then on the test, you're going to try and put them together. Do not put them together. But I said an exponent of a variable. So we have 2 to the x equals 8. Okay? 
So what base can we make them all be? 2. 2 to the x equals 2 to the 3. So now we have x equals 3. And we're done. E. E is in the common base lesson because you can make it a common base. So a whole bunch of people tell me, well, we can make them both be base 1. 1 to the 6 is 6. Mm -mm. 1 to the 6 is 1. 1 to the 8 is 1. 1 to the any exponent is 1. So if I can't make them both be base 1, maybe I can make them be, both be base 6. Because it's 6 to the what? What's 1? 6 to the? Uh -uh. And what's the exponent that you raise anything to that it becomes 1? So if you just have a 1 sitting out, you can make it be any base you need it to be. Because 6 to the 0 is 1. 1,000 to the 0 is 1. 50 to the 0 is 1. Negative 5 to the 0 is 1. Anything to the exponent 0 is 1. So whatever base you need it to be, you can make it. So we're going to have 6 to the 2x minus 3 equals 6 to the 0. And then we can just do 2x minus 3 equals 0. Add 3. 2x equals 3. Divide by 2. And x equals Okay. So these are all the nicest ones where you just have one base on both sides, except for D. D had two bases on the one side, but both of the bases you could put together because they had the exponent 1. Okay? We agree? All right. So it's not going to stay there. This is our next one. 2 to the x minus 3 equals 4 times 32 to the x. So this is what people do. It is extremely wrong, but it is what you guys do. You go, okay, 4 times 32, and you tell me that to the power of x. Can we put them together? Apparently not. We cannot put them together because you can only put together numbers that both have an exponent of 1. Okay? So we can't put anything together because 4 is the only one that has an exponent of 1. It has nothing to combine to. It's just 4 to the 1. Okay? So we have 2 to the x minus 3. We have 4 to the 1. We have 32 to the x. We're going to leave ourselves a little note with a star that says, do not put the 4 and the 32 together. Why would I forever say that? Why? Because you always put the 4 and the 32 together. Don't do it. You're like, I would have never done that. You will. So we're going to leave ourselves a little note that says, do not multiply the 4 with the 32. You cannot do it. The 32 has an exponent, okay? Yes? That is the number one error that happens before we even start this question, okay? So if we can't put anything together, if we can't divide anything or multiply anything, the only thing we have left is possibly common base. So what's a common base to 2, 4, and 32? And remember, common bases we make smaller, not larger. 2. So we have 2 to the power of x minus 3. 4 is 2 to the 2 times 32, which is 2 to the 5 times x, so 5x. Okay, we're bringing grade 10 back again. x to the 6 times x to the 8 is x to the what? That doesn't even look like a 6. Oh, it's getting worse. You add them, so it's x to the... 14. So we have common bases. We add exponents. On the right-hand side here, what do we have? We add them because we have common base. So we're going to have 2 to the x minus 3 equals 2 to the... Wait, 
2 plus 5x, guys. Let's go back to grade 10. 9. 2 plus 5x is, I promise you, not 7x's. I have a 2, and I have 5x's. It is 2 plus 5x. You can't put them together. They're not like terms. Oh, my goodness. All right. Two plus five x is two plus five x. You can't put them together. They're not like terms. It's like let's go back to grade nine. Two plus three x plus five x minus four. How would you put these together? You'd say eight x minus two. You wouldn't say seven x or six x or some random x of some sort that you put them together. You can't put them together. They're not like terms. You cannot combine them. Please do not try and combine things that are not the same. Okay, so now we have the same base. What can we do? Set the exponents equal to each other. So the only extra step here is adding the exponents, which I didn't realize you guys would say 7x. That's a new one. Okay, note to self. All right, so we're going to get x minus 3 equals 2 plus 5x. Then people get stuck here. Move an x. So I'm going to minus x. So you get negative 3 equals 2 plus 4x. Subtract 2. Negative 5 equals 4x. Divide by 4. Still not 7x. x equals negative 5 over 4. Yeah. It's real. Okay. No. That is not. It's, it's even negative. Okay. All right. So the next one. So we have one, two, and three that we're going to go through, and then you're going to have some practice questions. Now, number two, what makes this one harder? That's number three. Number two, it has a fraction. But we can change a fraction to not be a fraction by doing what? So we can write this as 9 over 1 to the negative 1 x plus 1 equals 3, 81, 2 x plus 1. So now I have 9 to the negative x minus 1 equals 3 times 81 to the 2 x plus 1. So many of you fix this question really easily. You're like, boom, I can do this. 3 times 81 to the 2 x plus 1. No, you can't do that. You cannot do that. Do not do that. Stop yourself. Then what you do is you're like, oh, it's even easier. I will divide the 3 over. And then I will say 3 to the negative x minus 1. Are we allowed to do that? No. We cannot do any of the crazy math that you want to do. Okay? As much as you really want to, and I know you do because I've seen it before. Uh, the 7x was new, but this was not new. <laughs> okay. So 81 is 3 to the 4. So this is what we're going to do. So I'll show you where the error happens here, okay? 9 is 3 squared. That is good. 3 squared to the negative x minus 1 equals 3 times 3 to the 4, which is correct, to the 2x plus 1. Then we have to distribute, so we hope we remember to do that. Negative 2x minus 2 equals 3 times 3 to the 8x plus 1. Four. Okay. Without writing this down, I want you to be able to answer me what you think this is going to be. What is the exponent on the right going to be? Don't say it out loud. Think in your head. What is the exponent on the right going to be? The right is the side with the two threes. The left is very easy. The right. Okay. In your head, have you thought about it? What do you think the exponent is going to be? How many do you think it's going to be 8x plus 4? You can put your hand up. There's going to be a few of you. Often it's more than not. What's it going to be when I combine them? But they are. 
Who said it? Someone said it. It's 8x plus 5. This is 3 to the what? 1. So many people forget it. They just put a 0 there. But 3 to the 0 is actually 1, not 3. So it's a 1. So we get 3 to the negative 2x minus 2 equals 3 to the 8x plus 5. And then we can just solve. Negative 2x minus 2 equals 8x plus 5 as a 2x. Negative 2 equals 10x plus 5. Subtract the 5. 10x equals negative 7. 5 by 10. So remember, we do not want you guys being able to do all of this work and not knowing how to deal with having two x's on opposite sides of the equal sign. Because that is what I see happening all the time. You do the grade 12 math, and then just solving when you have two x's on each side, you just get stuck. I don't want you stuck on the grade 10 and 9 math, OK? If that is where you are stuck, come in and ask. I can't read minds. Like I said, I don't want to, so I'm glad. Um, there's that. So you have homework questions in your textbook as well. But number four, five, and six, I want you guys to write down. And you're going to do the questions. And this is the quiz we're going to mark tomorrow. OK? This is negative x over 4, if you can't tell. It's really tiny. So this is the quiz we're going to mark tomorrow with these questions. So I want you to write them down. And then I will give you the homework questions from your textbook in a second.